Hey people, what's up? This is Nigel with Nigel Explorers. And for those of you who don't know, I did post on my channel my uh, Problem Child fan, I believe on Friday, a couple of days ago, and how I had it disassembled, and how it was just a complete nightmare. It was a wreck. The dude lied to me uh, that I bought it from. Um, but that was the first video, and as I said, I would do a second video when I got it repaired, and I got it cleaned, and my findings on it. <clears throat> so anyways, there you have it. It's right there, put back together like a jigsaw puzzle. And this is a Lakewood P223. And this thing came out between 72 and 1972 and 75, 76 area. And it has a McMillan motor. So on that previous video that I did a couple of days ago, um, if you guys zoomed in or if you saw it the way it was, you could clearly see that the copper wiring in this motor was completely immaculate um, outside of all the thick ass dust and everything that I had to remove and stuff um, so I'm gonna say that this fan was probably not used that often um, but in my findings what I did discover though is if you guys are wondering um, the grills on this fan are actually from a third generation Lakewood as you can see down here on the footing. These typically came out on the third gen uh, Lakewood models uh, that Kmart sold and Lakewood. <coughs> Same thing on the on the back here. So in my findings what I found out with this dude um, and he may not have done it. It could have been whoever he got the fan from but what end up happening when it was disassembled when I took it apart the guy end up putting a um, second gen blade set as you can see right there he put a second gen blade set on a third generation box frame that's what he did so on this particular fan I guess he lost the third gen blade set on here which fan collectors will know that they're a lot thinner and they're more aerodynamic um, and these are clearly the second gen because they're round and they're f uh, fatter width wise and then the first gen are actually the more squared and have pointed tips on each upper corners so I don't know how how he did what he did but anyhow um, <laughs> to make a long story short, this is a, those are second gen uh, blades on a third generation box frame. And anybody can easily take those fins off and stick another set on here. But the problem is with this one is since he did that, um, the fan is kind of sluggish. Meaning it doesn't run very well. I mean it runs good now that it's been repaired but it doesn't run smoothly. So in other words, I could stick my finger in here and typically on my other fans, I could just barely push it and it would rotate very easily by itself three or four times in a circle. This one here, you kind of push it and it just goes like that and then stops real quick. So, and that's because the dude stuck the wrong set on this, on this particular fan. So, but anyhow, I did get it up and working. I got it cleaned. And it does work exceptionally well considering the flaws that that dude lied to me about. Um, <clears throat> but the other major issue with this fan was um, what ended up happening, why this fan was not working, if you guys are wondering. Um, there is actually a thermo chip that is put in the copper wiring on these Lakewood motors. So if you get a fan and it doesn't work, 
then what you'll have to do is what I did, you'll have to strip down the motor and you will have to get um, tweezers or pliers and you will have to go in between the copper wiring there is an actual thermo chip that is embedded inside the copper wiring and for those of you that doesn't know what a thermo chip is, a thermo chip is, is if the fan overheats if that motor overheats um, the fan will shut off to prevent any fires so most Lakewood and most other fans do come equipped with that thermo chip that's in that motor in case you didn't know so I had to end up ordering some actually they do make those thermo chips still um, I got mine off of eBay I believe or it might have been Amazon even and there's two different kinds there's a black kind and there's a clear clear kind the clear kind are a little more expensive and that's the kind that I purchased um, but you can still get them I think I got like a 10 pack for like nine dollars they were very very cheap so if you have a fan that does not working at home I bet you it is a thermo chip so go get the thermal chip put it in the back of that motor and the thing will probably turn on so don't throw it away or do anything without checking that first so that's why this fan was not working when I got it over the weekend <clears throat> The thermal chip basically had fried and my guess would be it's because it, for one it had a shitload of dust in the motor and two the fins are incorrect for this for this um, model size box fan um, the the fins are too heavy for this particular this motor on this one um, the motor was designed to actually uh, stand the weight of the third generation fins. So <clears throat> I'm assuming the guy had ran it and with the extra weight on that motor with this older set of fins is the motor eventually just that, that thermal chip in the back just burned out. So those were my findings on this fan and there you see it and it looks in very good condition like most of my fans do after I take them apart if I have to and put them back together um, all of the uh, slats are intact at least this guy was smart he did not break this slat off <laughs> so um, I did order uh, I did purchase another uh, vintage fan recently I should be getting it today actually and the guy I will let you know that the, he did break he did break a slat off on that one and there is a broken slat in the front but that I didn't do so when I do that video on my channel later on in the future then I'll get more definition with that one but I should be getting that one today actually so there you have it folks this is that one that was broken down and disassembled a couple of days ago and here it is in front of you in pretty good condition so I'm going to go ahead and start it on low and there you see it is light blue like I said and let's start this on low So, I mean, it does work <clears throat> fairly good. It's very, very quiet. But unless the fan's in front of you and you're a collector and you know how to work and operate with these fans, and you'll, I can't hard, I can't explain it to you on, on the video here, but it's, it's not operating like it should. So, in other words, the low is like going slower than it should medium is going slower than it should and high is going slower than it should and again that's because the weight for this motor is too heavy for that fin blade set that that dude put on there so this motor was designed for the third gen blades not the second one but it still works and out of everything um, the guy refunded my money and he didn't want the fan back so that's the best part about it all I guess it worked out in my favor I am definitely not bitching um, I got a 50 year old fan in mint condition that runs 
and I got it for free. How about that? You can't fucking beat that. So, I'm not bitching. <laughs> Let's go to medium. Ticker to high. Now let's do a spin down. And you'll see how quick those blades stop. See, that's, that's too tight. It shouldn't stop that quick like that. But there's nothing I can do about that. So I will turn it back on low. And then I'll do a walk around. show you the motor I'm back with my flashlight. So as you can see those coils are very clean in there. which is a good indicator that this fan has not been used all that much. So, I mean, there was a lot of thick dust and shit in there and I was easy, I was able to easily blow that out. But I've said, like I said in previous videos before, you can determine if a fan's been used a lot by the dust buildup and accumulation in between those coils in there and the copper wiring. If you can't get that thick shit out of there, then that means the fan's probably been used repeatedly. So I think I lucked out on a fair, fairly decent fan here and did get it for free. So like I said, I'm not bitching. And it does run, so. So it, it looks brand new now, like most of my fans do after I put them back together and clean them. Um, and I like this one too because there is an oil spout on the rear. And there's also one in the front. Let me see if I can... I can't show you because of the fins on it, but... Um, in case you guys are wondering what that hole is... Let me shut this off for a quick minute. In case you guys are wondering what that hole is right there... That is so you can actually place oil in it, and if you line that hole up on the on the um, fins right there, there's actually a front oil port on the motor, so you can actually put your oil tube in that hole there, and then and then get it inside the in the motor that way to get it on the shaft. To me, it's just easier just to pull the damn thing off and just lube it up that way. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and I do have this initial sticker down there from Lakewood, which is right there. I don't know if you can see it. So, and then the sticker is down. Sorry, I'm going to go back, back and forth here. It's right there. And I showed this on my other video a couple of days ago. So, I mean, everything is intact on this fan. It's immaculate condition. Um, the wiring up there, there's absolutely... There's nothing wrong. So, as I call some of my fans problem fans, this is, <clears throat> this 
this was a problem child fan for me. Um, but I got it up and running and I got it working. And like I said a minute ago, I got it for free. So most of us fan collectors know that vintage fans are not cheap. And I've been noticing lately too, the last couple of days, the prices on these are going extremely, they're, they're rocketing up. I mean, they, the price was just going up on these things. So it's, I'm really fortunate to have what I have and trust me, I still have tons more that you guys have not seen. I haven't placed on videos yet. So, um, <clears throat> and I actually do have another tan liquid like this one. Um, I actually have had that one for about a month and a half now. I've had it before this one. Um, I just haven't posted it up on my channel yet, but I have a couple of a couple of these and a couple of Kmart ones. So I don't want anybody to get um, confused with. <laughs> I don't want you to start seeing the same fan. It looks like it's the same one, but there's not. I've got four or five different Lakewoods like this one and a couple of blue ones from uh, Kmart and I actually just uh, got two more that are going to be coming in this this coming week um, that are different by the dial and the sticker so I'll be able to show you the difference between these and the other ones that are coming so yeah I got about seven more vintage fans on my way or on the way to my pad so I've got several several other channels that I'm going to do, plus the ones I haven't shown you that I still have at my house. So, I have lots of fans, believe it or not. I just have tons of them. So, anyhow, I'm going to start this back on low. I'm just rambling, sorry. And then I'll do a spin down from low. Well, actually, I'm going to take this back up to high. I'm a blonde, sorry. I just kind of woke up like an hour ago. <laughs> so, I'm still waking up. And then I'll let you guys listen to the motor. The motor sounds fine to me. Let's do a spin down from low. Oops, sorry. Now let's go off. There we go. Like I said, I just woke up and I'm a blonde, so I'm not fully coherent just at the moment. But I think I'm doing pretty good. So anyhow, there is my problem fan child, folks. Um, wrong fin set for that box from. But I got it for free, and it does work, and it looks pretty much brand new. Um, and again, the problem with this fan was the thermo chip um, in the motor. It was kaput which means the fan overheated at some point and those thermal chips are designed to shut the fan off and if you don't get the chip replaced the fan will never go back on again. Now you can take that thermal chip out and you can rewire the copper ring wiring back there and you can run the fan without the thermal chip in there. I wouldn't suggest doing that because if the motor does overheat and it happens to tip over for whatever reason it can start a fire. So, you can operate these Lakewood fans still without that thermo chip in there if you remove it and then rewire it. But again, I wouldn't recommend that because it can start a fire. So, go get those thermal chips. They're dirt cheap and why you still can. And to prevent any fires for everybody's safety, including, including yours. So anyhow, thanks for watching my, my problem child fan folks and more to come subscribe to my channel any comments or whatever please leave them below and hope everybody has a good day peace out